Hey everyone and welcome to episode 137 of Unboxing Wednesdays for books arriving in stores on Wednesday, June 12th, 2013. Ricky, what adjective would you use to describe this Wednesday's books? Scrumptious. I was thinking more along the lines of super. Uh, delicious. That was a softball I lobbed at you, man. You should have knocked that one out of the park. I'm not in your brain, man. I don't know what's in there. You should get in there, man. Get on my level. I don't know if I want to. Ricky, it's a huge day. It's Man of Steel Day here at Stadium Comics. If you're watching this on Wednesday and it is before 9 p.m. Eastern Time, you still have time to get down to Stadium. Is that going to happen, Kevin? It might happen. You still have time to get down to Stadium and pick up your copy of Superman Unchained number one, and possibly Bubblegum number one, uh, with a cover illustrated by Adam Gorham. And Adam Gorham will be here all day, sketching and signing away. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get to this week's comics. Ricky, open up some boxes. How would you like me to open them? Like, what kind of adjective would you like me to open them with? Uh, freaking right now. Um, that's that's more of a verb. First up today, the lantern rings are back. Here are the Green Lantern Rings and Blue Lantern Rings provided to us by DC Comics. Actually, these were supposed to come in a couple weeks ago that we, so we could give them away in conjunction with um, Green Lantern number 21. But uh, they were a little late getting here. Got an Adventure Time, Lumpy Space Princess, Plastic Tumbler, a BMO Tumbler, and a Finn and Fiona Tumbler. We got a bunch of new pop vinyl figures in from Funko. The Masters of the Universe collection has arrived. We've got Spike Orr and Hordak, She-Ra, and He-Man and Skeletor. And we've got some Sonic the Hedgehog pop vinyl figures, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. This one's got a place on my bookshelf. It's the Kotobukiya Artifacts Batman statue from their uh, Justice League line. This is the newest statue in that series. Uh, again, I really love the packaging on these, and the figure itself is pretty awesome. Also from Kotobukiya, this is perhaps the coolest statue ever created. It's a Batman Killing Joke statue uh, featuring the Joker, and we featured this on previous reviews in the past, and we were really looking forward to seeing what this looks like in person. It's a huge statue. It includes a spotlight that, that lights up and it's motion activated. Um, it's got all kinds of extra parts and accessories with it, and it also makes a camera shutter sound. When we unbox this, I thought that the retail on this would be about two, three hundred bucks, but it's only one twenty nine ninety nine, and you can be sure that uh, this won't be available in stores much longer. It'll probably be worth a heck of a lot more in the near future. We also received this in our shipment. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it is, so I'm gonna open it up here. A heck, it's a cassette tape. When was the last time you saw one of these? A lot of you watching the show probably have never even used one of these. I have. Yeah, what was the first cassette tape uh... that you remember? The Guns N' Roses, the one with the blue... Appetite for Destruction? No, the, the blue one. Yeah. Oh, Use Your Illusion 2. Yeah. Good album. Yeah. Good album. I was listening to the Terminator song for a long time. That was a good one. You Could Be Mine? That's a good song. Nice. I had like this portable like cassette player. Like... At one point when I was a kid, I had a jean jacket <laughs> with a Guns N' Roses patch on the back. That was Rebel. hardcore. Yeah. Rebel. Grade 5 was a rebellious year. And this is a cassette called Telesynthology. And it's by DJ Finish Him. Whoa. Who the hell's DJ Finish Him guy? I don't know, but he's one handsome gentleman. We've got a couple copies of this available at Stadium Comics right now. They're $10 a piece. That is the cassette. See through purple. It's nice. Purple. One of my favorite uh, cassettes that I've ever owned was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, soundtrack, the first movie. And it was also a colored cassette, but I got the red cassette. For Raphael, but there was a purple one available as well for Donatello. You can pick up uh, a digital copy of this album at djfinishhim.bandcamp.com. You can also buy a physical copy of this. I think it's limited to only 33 copies worldwide. Whoa. So bust out those old cassette players. Moving on to the collected editions, we have a new printing of Preacher Book One, Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon's masterpiece. 
The Ninja Turtles miniseries Secret History of the Foot Clan collected here in trade paperback. Call Avon Oming's The Victories, Volume 1. Resurrection Man, Volume 2 from DC Comics. This is Volume 2 of the Catwoman run by Ed Brubaker and Cameron Stewart. New from DC today is the Number One's Comic Covers Portfolio. This is a collection of all 52 covers from the New 52 presented in an art print format. Deadpool Killustrated, the second installment in the Deadpool Killogy, gets its release here in a soft cover from Marvel Comics. Mike Del Mundo, who did all the covers for Deadpool Killustrated, also Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, and the upcoming Deadpool Kills Deadpool, will be in our store on Wednesday, July 3rd to sign copies of uh, what will then be a new release of Deadpool Kills Deadpool issue number one and Dexter number one. You may also be familiar with Mike's work from... Uh, the amazing covers he's been doing on X-Men Legacy as of late. So we're really excited to have him here and hope you guys can join us for that event. Moving on to the small press books, we have The Dream Merchant, issue number two. Breath of Bones, A Tale of the Golem, a new book from Steve Niles. Transformers Prime Beast Hunters, this is issue number two. Transformers Regeneration 1, issue 92. Here is the variant cover. Pretty excited for this book from Boom Studios, it's Six Gun Gorilla. Uh, written by Simon Spurrier, drawn by Jeff Stokely, covers by Ramon Perez. Uh, this uh, seems like a really cool concept. Can't wait to read it. Here's The Black Beetle, issue number four by Francisco Francavilla from Dark Horse Comics. New today from Dark Horse is The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. I know there's a lot of people looking forward to this book. It's written by Gerard Way, he of my chemical romance fame, and illustrated by Becky Cloonan. Aphrodite 9 has two covers. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has two covers. Here is the My Little Pony variant. Bravest Warriors reaches issue number 9. Manhattan Projects issue 12. The Walking Dead number 111. The Shadow number 14 has two covers. As does Grimm issue number 2. Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms Cutter issue number 3. Here's Star Wars issue number 6. Peter Panzerfaust number 11. From Scott Snyder who's got another little book coming out today we've got American Vampire Special The Long Road to Hell this is a one shot and finally from Aspen Comics we have the new Bubble Gun issue number one this is uh, June's installment of their 10 for 10 initiative that's 10 number one issues for one dollar these are the two regular covers and here is the Stadium Comics variant illustrated by Adam Gorham this is available now on our website at stadiumcomics.com slash exclusives only a dollar. Adam did an awesome job on it. Josh Perez, the colorist, uh, also did fantastic work here. And we're super excited and pleased with this cover. Adam will be here in store on Wednesday signing this book. So if it's still Wednesday and you're viewing this video, come on down and get one of these signed. Moving on to Marvel, we've got a second printing of Thanos Rising issue number one. And here's Avenging Spider-Man issue number 22. What I believe is the final issue of Avenging Spider-Man before we see the launch of Superior Spider-Man Team-Up, which will be coming out in July. Wolverine and the X-Men, issue 31. Here is the Wolverine Through the Ages variant cover by Ryan Stegman, featuring Jubilee. Here's Wolverine, issue number 4, and the Wolverine variant cover. Uncanny X-Force, issue number 6. Uncanny X-Force Wolverine variant. Deadpool, number 11. Here is the Deadpool Wolverine variant by Dave Johnson. Venom number 36, Alpha Big Time issue number 5, Ultimate Comics X-Men issue number 27, Astonishing X-Men number 63, Avengers Assemble number 16, Thor God of Thunder issue number 9, here's the Wolverine variant for that book, Guardians of the Galaxy issue number 3, here is the Guardians of the Galaxy variant cover, and here's the Lionel U variant cover, Savage Wolverine issue number 6 features a new creative team, uh, Zeb Wells is the writer, Joe Mad is the artist, and we've got Peter Steigerwald on colors. That's an all-star team if there ever was one. Uh, so lots of people excited about this book. Here is the Savage Wolverine blank cover. Here's the Savage Wolverine X-Men anniversary cover. The Wolverine Through the Ages variant, which pays tribute to Old Man Logan. Here is the Umberto Ramos variant cover. And the J. Scott Campbell variant. All right, moving on to DC Comics, we have Masters of the Universe, Origin of Hordak, issue one. Here's Batman Little Gotham, issue number three. Katana, number five. Smallville, number 14. Arkham Unhinged, number 15. The Hunted, issue number six. 
Here's Constantine number four. World's Finest issue number 13. Suicide Squad issue number 21. Here's Nightwing issue 21. Superboy 21 featuring Crypto. Green Lantern Corps number 21. Here is the Green Lantern Corps variant. Batgirl issue 21. Alright, I'm really excited for this book. It's the start of a new story arc in Batman, uh, written by Scott Snyder, illustrated by Greg Capullo, and it is Batman Zero Year. I got the chance to read this earlier, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Scott Snyder explores a lot of the history behind Gotham City once again, and uh, as well as the history of one of comics' greatest characters, Batman. Really cool first issue of this arc. It's got a lot of potential. We'll see where it goes. Here is the combo pack cover, the variant cover by Jock. And the 1 in 100 black and white variant. Alright, this is what today's all about. It's Superman Unchained issue number 1. The new book from Scott Snyder and Jim Lee. Timed perfectly to come out just before the Man of Steel movie comes out this Friday. Everybody has been waiting for a fantastic Superman comic. And if any book has a chance at being great, it is this one. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I can't wait to read it. Uh, the art inside is beautiful. Right in the middle of the book, it's got this awesome, like, fold-out comic panel. Which is uh, pretty awesome, but it's also cumbersome, and you got to be careful uh, not to wreck the book when you're putting it back in. There are a bunch of variant covers for this book. We've got all of them. First, we have the combo pack cover. We've got this uh, Superman Reborn variant cover by Dan Jurgens, uh, paying, paying tribute to the Superman of the early 90s, mullet and all. Kind of like his hairstyle. Here's the new 52 Superman Unchained variant cover. This is by Brett Booth. We've got the Superman vs. Lex Luthor variant. This is by Lee Bermeo. The Modern Age Superman Unchained variant. You gotta love how they went all out with the trade dress on this to make it really look like it was a book uh, from the early to mid 80s. Uh, you've even got the old DC logo up there. That's awesome to see. Here is the Neil Adams Bronze Age variant. Here's the Silver Age variant to Superman Unchained. Probably my favorite out of the covers. This is by uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Here is the Superman Unchained Golden Age variant uh, by Dave Johnson. Also a fantastic cover. I believe this is a 1 in 75 cover. And by the legendary Bruce Timm, we have this 1 in 100 uh, 1930s Superman cover. And finally, we have the 1 in 300 Jim Lee black and white sketch variant cover. Now, Wednesday, June 12th is Man of Steel Day here at Stadium Comics. There'll be lots of Superman Unchained number ones for people to pick up. Adam Gorham will be here all day doing sketches. We're giving away free copies of this special edition of All-Star Superman number one by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. Also, Warner Brothers have given us these Man of Steel mini posters to give away as well. These are very limited and uh, won't last too long, I would think. Just want to remind you that most of the comics you saw today are available the same day as they're available in print through our digital comics web store, powered by Comixology. Just head over to stadiumcomics.com, click on the links on the right-hand side of the screen to bring you to our digital web store for DC Comics, or our store for all other publishers. Each time you buy something from our digital web store, a couple cents gets kicked back our way, and eventually all that change piles up and we're able to afford something like this New 52 Justice League Batman from Kotobukiya, which I'm going to buy and put on my bookshelf. I also want to remind everybody about a huge event coming up on Saturday, June 29th. It is the opening of our second Stadium Comics location here in Brampton, and also free graphic novel day at that new location. Head over to stadiumcomics.com to get all the details on that event. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. Michael Walsh is going to be our special guest and he is the artist on the upcoming X-Files season 10 issue number one. He'll be there signing copies of that book, doing some sketches for the people in attendance and uh, it should be an all-around good time. Lots of free graphic novels to give away as well. We're going to reveal details on which graphic novels we'll be giving, in, giving away a little closer to the date. So last week we asked you guys uh, whose ass would you like to kick for a copy of Kick-Ass number one. Uh, we got some cool comments. Uh, this Michael Jacko guy said, I'd want to kick the ass of Lobo because the Incredible Hulk is my favorite hero and I lo Lobo is Ricky's favorite hero. Why do you want to kick my favorite hero's ass, dude? That's messed up. Um, and... 
Ellis Riviera said, I'd like to kill Wolverine's ass so he could stop showing up in everyone else's book. That's a good plan. I second that notion. But the winner goes to Iron Colossus 4, who says, I'd kick Shazam's ass. It would be the only way to kick a kid's ass and not get arrested. Am I right? Who doesn't want to kick a kid's ass? Am I right here? Hey, I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one. And not get arrested, is that so much to ask? But this week we're giving out a copy of the hugest book in the world, Superman Unchained number one. And what we would like to see are your fake spoilers for Man of Steel the movie. Perhaps Superman goes crazy and kills everybody and starts his own totalitarian regime? Hmm? A little injustice? Maybe Batman shows up and punches Superman into the sun, which would actually make him more powerful. So let us know in the comments your fake spoilers for Man of Steel, and the best comment wins a copy of Superman Unchained. All right, everybody, that is it for this week. Thank you once again for watching. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. We just passed 700,000 views, Ricky. Crazy, dude. Yeah, 700,000 views over the last couple years. Thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in to whatever episodes you've tuned into. Even if you're just tuning in for the first time. But if you are tuning in for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We want to get up to 5,000 subscribers so we can do another live show. And Ricky, rumor has it that there are a lot of prizes to give away for that next live show. Tons, dude. I'm just Tons. saying. 5,000 is not far off. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also remember to check out the other awesome shows on our channel. Ricky, is it true what I hear yeah. about yeah. flavorful reviews? True. It's ending at uh, episode 100 and point one. 100 point one. 100 point one. Yeah. It's the final episode. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is yeah. there ever a chance that the gang will reunite and we could see newer episodes somewhere down the road? Uh, I don't know. I pretty much hate them all, so... No. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe uh, we'll all come back for a flavorful reunion. Now, I assume there's all kinds of uh, lawyers involved and stuff to, uh, it's, it's to properly break up this trio and make sure that you know each of you has a future share in yeah. any and all profits that all past episodes of the flavorful... Yeah. Uh, reviews make. Yeah, man, we got uh, all that lawyers. All right, don't get into it like a Yoko, John, Paul, Already happened, dude. George, Ringo situation. You got anything new coming up? I'm sure I do. I don't all know. right, I hope well, so. We got, we, some, we got some secret stuff to announce. We, we got some secrets. We need a replacement. We got for some that secrets. Show. We got some secrets. Don't worry. Don't right. worry. We got you. All right, cool. I'd like to also shout out to all the people we met at the Niagara Falls Comic Con. Yes, that such was an as... awesome time. Such as that Nathan fellow, he was very nice. And the dude who worked with Neil Peart, that was crazy. There's a guy who worked with Neil Peart on stuff. I think he designed a book for Neil. Niagara Falls Comic Con was an awesome time. Uh, I can't wait for the next one, next year. It's gonna be even bigger and better. All right, that's all for now, everyone. Hope to see you here on Man of Steel Day, Wednesday, June 12th. Hope to see you at the theaters uh, sometime over the weekend. Stadium Comics is gonna be hanging out at the theaters on Saturday, June 15th with some cool people, some awesome artists, uh, and uh, you know, selling the crap out of Superman merchandise at the movie theater, basically. And uh, I can't wait to see this movie. It's gonna be so awesome. Let's all gather together again next week, Ricky, and discuss how awesome or disappointing the Man of Steel movie was. What do you think? Done. All right. Hopefully I can watch it by then. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your comics this week, and we'll see you all next time for episode 138.